The difference with this one is this is sine. If it's written like that, you assume it's sine of x to the third. Here the outside function is sine. So this is going to be cos x to the third times the derivative of the inside, which is 3x squared. Okay, so I suppose if you wrote it in the, the usual form, you'd write it like that. Uh, the other ones, I'm, I'm thinking you're okay with some of these. Uh, but this one's probably the one that caused you a bit of problems, a few problems. Uh, you could do it as a quotient rule thing with the first function being 1. So you could say it's f. You know, if, if this is f and this is g, you could do it as f prime g minus fg prime over g squared. f prime is 0, so this whole thing is going to be... Um, this whole thing is going to be zero, right? The top function. So it's just going to be minus um, f times g prime here, minus one times g prime over g squared. I mean, there was a question on the assignment that you had to do that asked you to write a, a rule for a reciprocal of a function. And the rule you end up writing, if you use the quotient rule like that, you get minus g prime over g squared. That's the that's the rule for uh, reciprocal of a function. It just comes from the quotient rule where the first one is 1. So either way, whether you use the quotient rule or that simplified thing, you end up with, um, what do you end up with here? What's the derivative of that bottom function? Cosecant is minus cosecant cotangent. And cotangent is minus cosecant squared. And then on the bottom you have this cosecant plus cotangent squared, right? Like that. If you want to simplify that, you need to factor the top. If you factor out a negative cosecant out of the top, you're left with cotangent plus cosecant. And the bottom you have two of those factors, cosecant plus cotangent. So if you cancel one of them, right, you got one here and you have two of them there. So cancel one of those. That just makes it minus, oops, cosecant over cosecant x plus cotangent. And that actually probably is wrong in the back. It's probably missing the negative, isn't it? Yeah, that's unfortunate that all the answers I gave you are wrong, eh? Um, afterwards, let's correct the whole rest of the answer key because I do have them on here handwritten. <coughs> you should be able to make the the chain rule work out the same way here. Okay, if you use the chain rule. Okay, if you use the chain rule, we'll just keep it separate here. Um, if you use the chain rule, it just involves writing it as a as a composition of functions rather than a reciprocal like that. One over something you can always write as that to the negative one. So if you write it as if you write it as cosecant plus cotangent to the negative one, the way you're going to start finding the derivative is you're going to say if you have something to the negative one, just ignore the inside function and at first write it's going to be negative one that to the negative two, right? Okay, that's the starting point. Negative one times that to the negative two, and then times the derivative of the inside function. You're going to end up with the same thing as you have on the other side here. Now, I don't have tons of room here, so we're going to have to move this over. And move this up here. Okay, then you need the other part. Okay, so then the, the other part of this then is times the derivative of the inside, right? which is negative, we wrote it over there, right? Negative cosecant x cotangent x, right? That's the derivative of that. Minus cosecant squared. Um... Oh, you know what? No, the answer in the back is right. What did I forget over here? I forgot this negative in my original thing there, right? So it's it's this negative. That's why it is right, yeah. 
Uh, well, because it should work out this way, and this way it's going to, you know, you got a negative involved here, and you have this negative here, so, yes. Anyways, the, the rest of this is just following from here down, basically. If you write the negative 2 as being on the bottom of the fraction, this you can do the similar way. If you write this, if you want to use a chain rule here, you can write it as that to the negative 3. Sometimes that might be easier than multiplying that out to the... Sixth power or whatever. Y prime. Okay. Y prime negative three, that to the negative four, and then times the derivative of the inside here is easy. It's two X. So then if you want to write negative three times two X all over this to the fourth. Again, don't feel you have to multiply everything out. If if the original function had this factored like that and not expanded, then don't feel you have to multiply out this. The only reason to kind of start to do some of that algebra is if it's going to simplify things. You should, of course, you know, simplify the top. Uh, there's, the, there's the derivative. If you, if you use the quotient rule, you'll come up with the same thing there. Anyways. Um, the other one's up there I'm sure you can do and check for yourself. Combining the chain rule with other rules, think about what rules are involved here or what we have to combine them with. Hopefully you're getting better at looking for what's a product and what's a, what's a composition or what's a quotient and what's a composition. You have x squared times this function, right? This is f, or no, let's call that g just to be... Follow along. And uh, that's f, right? You have two different functions there. So you have f times g, but g is a, is a function of something else, right? So you have f times g, but g is a function of, oops, of whatever you want to call it. You don't need to put letters here. If it helps, you can put letters, right? So you have g of h of x, right? So you have, a, you have a composition times just another function here. So first you're going to have to use the product rule and then within that use the chain rule. If it helps write this, but if it makes it more complicated, please don't. So if you're trying to find the derivative of this, first you have to write it as, you know, f prime, f prime g plus f g prime. So you need f prime, x squared is 2x. That's that. Times g is sine x to the third plus 3. Plus this other part here. What's the other part? Put the, yeah, put the function f down there, x squared. And then the derivative of this, if it helps at this first stage, you can write it kind of in this way, I guess you could say sine of x to the third plus three. I don't know, this is kind of goofy notation, but you could put prime and say I still have to find the derivative of that. Or you could write it as with that ddx kind of notation if you like that better. Okay, you could say times I still have to do the derivative of this. You could do the whole thing all at once if you want. I don't. It doesn't matter to me. But if you want to kind of go through it one stage at a time, you can do that and then work out the derivative of that, that function because you need the chain rule there. This is all the same here. But just since one of the two things you're doing the product of is uh, itself a composition. So what's the derivative of that thing? Sine of another function there. Sine of something is cosine of that, right? And if it helps, just leave the brackets open for now. Cosine of that function times the derivative of the inside, which is 3x squared, right? So first product rule, and then inside this is, since that's a composition, that's, that's this whole thing here, which is this whole thing here. You can simplify it, you know, down to something here. 2x sine... 
plus 3x to the fourth, I guess. Seems like you should be able to factor or do something here, but don't feel like you can, if it's sine of this, you can't factor out this, right? You can't factor it out of a sine function. So that's probably as far as you can go with that. You could factor out, you know, x out of this. Not that that would necessarily help you with anything, unless you were simply.